Okay, so Tori is a relatively new piece of software that allows us to actually use web code to write desktop apps. So if you know how to write web apps, uh, maybe you want to transfer a web app into a desktop application. This is an example of some React code that is for my file explorer. If you haven't checked out already, I'll link it in the description. So the way this works is it consists of a backend side kind of and a front end. So the front end is going to be what everything that's displayed to the user. The back end is going to be consisting of Rust code and there's a bunch of APIs that you can use in the back end. So you can use HTTP, you can use the clipboard, dialogue, all that kind of stuff, all that fun stuff, anything really you can do in Rust, you can add to your front end using some IPC, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Just a quick note is Tori also provides a JavaScript API for most of the backend functions anyway, so you don't technically have to use Rust, that's more for complicated features. So you might be wanting to click off because of this is Rust, you don't actually need to know that much complicated Rust in order to use this, but I understand if you want to write good Rust code. On the roadmap is actually using bindings for Go in Python C++, which is going to be very useful because it means you won't have to write the back end in Rust. It isn't just HTML and CSS you can use, any of the popular frameworks you can use. You may have heard of Electron before, this is very similar to Tori, and this is probably a bit more popular. But the thing with Electron is it can be very slow at loading, if you've used Discord before it takes a while to load, and it can use up a lot of memory. If we actually look at the speed comparison between Electron and Tori, you'll see that Tor uses uh, a significantly smaller installer size, memory consumption is less than half, and the launch time is a lot faster as well. There will be some speed implications because you're writing web code, which is technically a browser window, but Tori minimizes this to a point where it's not so much a problem. So we're going to start by installing everything, getting the prerequisites down. This is just going to be a plain HTML and CSS application, but of course, if you're using a framework, you can also do that too. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you've got Rust installed. If you haven't got Rust installed already, you can go to the website, press get started and follow the installation instructions. I'll leave a link in the description for that. Okay, so once you're inside a folder to contain your project, we're going to open the command line. So we're going to type in CMD, which you can do on Windows to open the same folder. And then we're going to use a tool to create the Tori project. There is a manual way of doing this that you can find in the documentation, but for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to be using this command. So the command is npm create Tori dash app at latest. It might ask you to install the dependencies, in which case you want to select yes. And then once that has happened, you can just type in the name so I'm going to put in tutorial. It's going to be a JavaScript project and for simplicity's sake we're going to use npm. This is going to be a vanilla project but you can do this in React, Felt, whatever you like and we're going to be using JavaScript as well today. So now we have this you'll see that the files inside this folder have been created for the project. Once that's there you want to cd into the project and then you just want to npm install the dependencies. You'll see that a node of modules has been created here and now if we do npm run tori dev it should open the desktop application for us. It might take a while to install the dependencies, but you only have to do it once, so don't worry too much about it. Okay, so you can see that the desktop window has now been opened, so we know that this is working. Okay, so now we have this, we're going to open VS Code in that folder, you can use whatever ID you like. I'm just going to open the terminal and do code dot to make sure it opens in that folder. Also, I'm not too sure about other IDEs, but you can install a Tori extension, which will help with IntelliSense and stuff like that. If we have a look at our structure here, you'll see that we have a source Tori and a source folder. So in the source folder, this will contain all of the HTML CSS and JavaScript code. This is where you can write JavaScript code, anything like that, as well as being able to put assets inside it. I'm going to explain what this invoke thing here is in a minute, but first I want to briefly show you the Rust side of things. So here is the main RS. So in this file, what we have is the basic code that can get the program running. You can write as much Rust code as you like here, and this is really good if you want to really quickly process some data, um, but you don't have to use this. As I mentioned, you can use the JavaScript API instead. If you want to go a bit more advanced, I'm going to demonstrate to you the IPC processing. So what this allows us to do is send communications between the Rust side and the front end side. So I want to demonstrate to you what the app does exactly. So we have an input here and if we enter the name Kanaticus and press greet it will tell us hello Kanaticus you have been greeted. If we have a look inside the JavaScript side of things you'll see that when the input is submitted uh, we actually call the greet function in JavaScript and you'll see that this sets the text content of the message which is defined in the HTML file here to the result of this command. So we call the greet command and we pass in the input value. So what's happening here is if you have a look inside the Rust side of things, you'll see that this greet is the same name as this invoke. That's important. We also need to maintain the same case when we do that. So if we do it in snake case in Rust, this invoke also needs to be in snake case. You'll see that in the Tori side, we have the Tori command attribute. And this just defines that this is a command and can be invoked through the JavaScript side. All we do is send a formatted string where it takes in the name that we provide just here. 
and it adds it along with this string. And you'll see that when we set the text content, it's actually setting this text content here. You'll see hello Connecticut, which is defined hello name, you've been greeted from Rust. This is also an asynchronous function, so we do need to call await hit. One thing I also wanted to mention is that if this if this parameter here was called the name, and note that this is in snake case, and we put this to the name, this would not actually work. We would need to use camel case inside JavaScript, even if this is in snake case here. And that's because Tori likes to separate the practices of JavaScript and Rust, where Rust is usually snake case, JavaScript is usually camel case. One more thing I wanna show you is actually how to send events from the Rust side to the front end. So what we can actually do is take in an app here. So what we do is we say app handle, like so, and we just wanna make sure that we import that from Tori. This will provide an app object to us. We don't need to provide any extra arguments here. And the app has a property called app.emit all, and this will emit to all windows of the program because obviously you can have multiple windows, especially if we have different dialogues. We're gonna call the event event name, and we're just going to provide the payload event payload. You wanna make sure you also unwrap this, which will check for errors. Unwrapping isn't always good practice, and if you are new to Rust, I'd recommend looking into error handling. But what this is doing is it's emitting the event with event name, and it's emitting this payload. This payload can be of any type. It can be an object, it can be a number, anything you like. And then this can be listened for in the front end. So something I wanted to show you is the APIs available, which is shown in the documentation, but if we console.log window.tori, and this is something specific to vanilla, you'll see that we get an object providing all the APIs available to us. This is some fun APIs that you can use in the front end to enhance your application. So you've got, you know, file system, event clipboard, anything like that. In this case, we want to use the event import. So what we're going to do is we're going to do const listen equals window tori dot event. And this is a listen function. It's going to be slightly different if you're using a framework instead of vanilla, but you can check the documentation for how that works. What we want to do now is add a listener. So we're going to say listen for event name, uh, because that's what we called it here. The camel case doesn't apply, which is a bit weird. Not entirely sure why that is. You might be able to use it actually, but you might want to check the documentation for that. The second argument is going to be a callback. So in this case, it's going to be the event payload and we can call this whatever we want. So this is actually just looking for the event payload we provided here. Again, you can provide any type you like, and it will be serialized to something that JavaScript supports. You might need to implement the serialize and potentially deserialize trait, depending on what you're doing, but that's for another time. If we now console.log the event payload, what this is doing is it's listening for event name, taking in the payload, which is event payload, and then we're just console.logging it. Make sure you've refreshed your Tori application and it's reloaded. And now what you'll see is that when we greet, which is called here, it will then fire back the event name. And then this is listened for, it doesn't matter where it's listened for. So in theory, when we press the submit button, very shortly after, it will console.log the data. So if I say Kinaticus, I press greet, you'll see that we actually get the event and we get the event name and the payload is the payload, which we provide just here. This has been an introduction to making web apps with Tori. If you would like to see more, let me know and I will see you in the next video.